Okay, welcome everybody to another uh, webinar from uh, Jane Irrigation. I'm Richard Restucia, uh, your host today uh, and Vice President of Water Management Solutions at Jane. And uh, today's session is on using infiltration data to adjust irrigation scheduling. This is brought from our, uh, to you from our Ag Technology Group. And uh, once again, there's some really nice features in Jane Logic that help you set up irrigation schedules and um, today we're really fortunate to have David Lindsay, uh, Territory Sales Manager for uh, Jane, uh, uh, in particular with the AgTech products, uh, helping us out today to really understand how powerful this uh, process is and how powerful this tool is. And uh, we're really lucky to have Dave. Uh, you know, Dave's been working uh, Jane Logic for a few years now, and I'm always impressed with not just his knowledge, but his attention to detail. You know, when it comes to doing irrigation right, there is a ton of details that you have to pay attention to. And Dave is on top of this like uh, no one else I've ever seen. So I always appreciate that uh, about Dave. I appreciate his can-do uh, attitude. And uh, you all get to benefit from that today uh, in his presentation. So uh, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dave. Dave, welcome. Thank you, Richard. Always uh, kind words from you. It's so nice to hear that about myself. <laughs> and I always feel worried that I can't live up to those expectations. You've never let us down, Dave, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. So a uh, little impromptu. Uh, we had some scheduling changes on the, the meeting for today, so bear with me. Um, I think there's some great information here, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the uh, topics for today, we're going to talk about the infiltration widget and the chart. Uh, soil moisture performance widget, irrigation scheduler, which is also a widget, and writing a schedule and why we're doing it. And then hopefully we'll have some time for, for questions afterwards. Another little overview on the image for those of you that can see it. Uh, what we do, again, I add every time that we need to put in a reservoir or some tank level sensing in there, because we do that as well. And this is our, our, our uh, Oh, I forgot to add a title there, it's my bad. Uh, this is our, our subject today. It's uh, uh, Mr. Silvera, Brian Silvera, um, farmer in, I think he's in the Selma area. Um, we are currently working with um, using his infiltration widget to determine his irrigation scheduling and the duration of the schedule, which is I think a little more important on this aspect. Um, his, his time he's doing is good. Uh, he just needed to spread it out because he has some sandy soils. So right here, what you see is the infiltration widget. And you can see by this, the, the blue jagged lines that are going down is the water infiltrating through the soil. The lighter blue lines that are adjacent to it or sometimes mixed in with it are actually the irrigation schedule and how long they ran. Hopefully, the, you guys that have JMLogic know what I'm looking at here or know what you're looking at here. Now, when you click the view, it takes you into a, the infiltration chart. And in the, in the infiltration chart, you can set the dates that you want to see. The colors on the bottom of the chart will literally tell you if they're green, you're within your targeted root zone. If you're red, you're past. And if they're white, which we don't have any here, you're, you're, you didn't make it to the root zone. Uh, he has his root zone set between uh, 8 and uh, 28 inches. And he looks like he was doing pretty good. He was pushing a little water earlier uh, past the root zone, trying to build up his uh, profile of moisture in his soil. Um, he also used Jane Logic to uh, prep the soil prior to planting two years ago. So uh, we've got a lot of data here with him. So Dave, can I ask a few questions back on Absolutely. that slide, please? Yeah. So uh, along the uh, left-hand side of the slide, uh, this would be the previous slide. Okay. Yeah. So the, this is the depth in it inches uh, on the left-hand side. So when you say he's got it set from 8 to 24, that's basically all this green area in there, right? Yes, sir. I, okay. can you, oh, sorry about that. Can you see my mouse when I uh, – on my yeah. mouse on the screen? Okay. Yeah, okay, so, this so then um, I think that date is 5-12 and 5-14, right? Yes, sir. And so we can see then from this that on the 12th and 13th, there was no irrigation. There was no water. Right. And so then where we actually see the blue now coming in, that's where we have a uh, irrigation uh, uh, set, right? This is yes, actually, sir. okay. 
So this, this, this blue line between here and here is on off. Um, we can set that irrigation indicator to any pressure that the customer desires. Uh, from the factory, the default setting is four PSI. So when the pressure sensor in the field sees four PSI, it starts calculating it as an irrigation event and flags it to start at that time. This correlates with the data down below. So you see that this irrigation event here started on 514 of 2020 at 645 a.m. The duration was 12.9 hours. Maximum depth it reached was 32 inches. This is a 32 inch probe. And because of how flat this line is, we suspect he pushed water a little further than that. So he started backing off on his irrigation run times, which again goes back to efficiencies. We're not wasting any water. We're not wasting any chemicals past the targeted root zone. The okay. uh, max, go ahead. And the fact that there's no uh, blue in between the uh, 14th and the 20th just means he didn't have irrigation on. That's correct. Right. That is okay. Correct. So we're yes. only we're only showing the moisture in the infiltration chart shows the moisture in the soil when irrigation is on. Right. So the infiltration widget is is super powerful. What it's looking at it's looking at a time and distance. So how long, when, a, when the water moves through between the, the sensors at a certain speed, it triggers that as an infiltration. So if, I mean, I don't know what the, 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 the numbers are, but if you went out there and you poured a little water on it and it, as it slowly went through the soil, it might not register as an infiltration, but you would see an increase on your graphing for the overall soil moisture performance. Um, so yes, but in between these two events, or in between these lines here, he was not irrigating. So every sawtooth is an irrigation event. And then those events correlate down here with the data. And you see your time to depth, the max depth that it reached, which in this case is the bottom of the probe, and then the rate, which the rate is very important too. Uh, you'll see in, in one of these slides, it was a little hot last Monday, and you'll see that his water didn't move as fast through the soil because he was losing more to evaporation, and the trees were just they were thirsty, you could tell. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Thank you, David. I, I just wanted to get those cleared up. So thank no, that's, you. That's, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, so, and then again, every one of these, and, and, and you can set this when you, when you pull up the view of what date parameters you want to see. Uh, so we're, we're targeting these right here because we knew, you know, he was, how, how long he was irrigating. Um, he's trying to back down to about 10 hours a set and going from three sets a week to four. Uh, we're doing it. We're actually going to start that next week. In the soil moisture performance widget is where you see the overall performance, and the green is good. It's actually very good. That's what you want to see. Now you see as we're creeping closer to the June 12th and currently today, you start seeing a little orange come out, and the orange is actually good. The brown there, the green is very good, and the blue is wet. So he he's still sitting good. He's got a lot of green in here. Um, a little bit of brown coming up. It was hot yesterday. We know that. He's irrigating right now. We'll show you that during the live presentation portion and why he's doing it. Yeah, and somebody, one, one of our guests, you know, pointed out that he's actually saving about three hours of pump run time. Absolutely. And not overwatering. So at a, a big cost savings as well here. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's where you're going to get your return on investment. The, 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 the quickest is when you literally start using the data. So you see here, this is the, the scheduler widget. Uh, the title of it would be the week that you're looking at, which would be this week, uh, June 8th, 2020. Um, he's forecasted based on the coefficient curve that's set the, you know, for his crop type, which is almonds. I think he's fourth leaf. Um, he's forecasted for 38. He's scheduling 30. He's already run by the time I took this image, 8.25. So he's a little behind, I think. And at the end of the week, we might see that 30 hours scheduled wasn't quite enough. You might need a little more. Obviously, it's forecasting ETC at 38. So if we go by exactly what they say, we might see we're over water or under. So we just came a little under to see what happened because the weather widget's telling us it was gonna cool off. Uh, and I'll show that in, in a minute as well. And then this is the actual scheduler itself. So from this one, I'm going to go to the live view. So he's currently running right now. You see this blue line right here in the bottom of the uh, June 12th block. 
and I hope you guys can see this screen. It might be kind of small. Um, the orange line is what was scheduled, and we can actually look at that. We can see for Friday, he scheduled 10 hours. He started at 7 a.m. Uh, he actually got a little overzealous and started a little early, which is fine. And um, this is the stop time. Now, now it's not calculating stop time because it's currently running. So it's giving you an eight hour, eight hours. And, and it'll, it'll just do it, that, stop at that date, that time. But as this progresses past that, it'll start calculating more. And if you turned it off now, it would recalculate as well. So you don't have to worry about that. You can see Monday's event. Uh, he, he was scheduled to run 10, started at 7 a.m. But when you look at the data, he actually, he actually started a little later, but he got his eight hours in, or I think he only got eight hours instead of 10 on that one as well. And then Saturday, he's scheduled for another 10 hours here. And that's to try and get caught up. We're supposed to be cooling down a little bit. Uh, while, while it's cool, the trees won't be uh, aspirating as much water. You know, they won't be working so hard, but he's gonna give them a shot of water to try and replenish what's, what he lost from the soil. And then this is it. So we're in the forecasting uh, widget is where we're looking at the weather. So Monday, we, it, it was a peaking, and then we look like it's going to get a little hotter. I'm sorry. This is forecasted for next week. So we're going to build up in between now, Saturday, and Sunday, preparing for Monday's heat wave, and then eventually Thursday, 99 degrees. So, Dave, I have another question here. So if it was uh, actually raining, right, we saw the irrigation events. But if you get some rain there, too, and we had some odd rain the past few weeks, um, does it show in the infiltration widget as well? It does. Uh, if you have a weather station on site through Jane Logic, the, the, the infiltration widget here will actually show orange lines down instead of blue, indicating a rain event that's taken from the, the Davis Vantage 2 weather station. Um, without the weather station, we'll just see infiltration. And here you don't see that. Our last seminar, we talked about that because the customer was flood irrigating. And somebody asked, why are we seeing all these infiltrations if he's not, doesn't have pressure? That would indicate two things. One, well, three. One, pressure sensor had failed, which we knew wasn't it. It rained, or he's doing some other sort of irrigation. In this case, the customer was flood irrigating because he has ditch water to do it, and it's not running that ditch water through his uh, micro-irrigation system. Okay, great, thank you. And the soil moisture performance uh, widget will show that as well too. You, you would actually see the, the increase of good or very good. So here's a good example of that. So here's today, we're looking at 40.5% is very good. 59.5 is good. We have zero dry and below and then nothing too wet. So this guy is really irrigating good and, and we wanna keep it like that. Sorry, I went to the wrong window there. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do is, so within the week of window, I'm gonna click the view button. It's gonna bring me into the schedule. This is what we were just looking at. So he's scheduled for 30 hours this week. His actual runtime as of right now, 14.5. And we're gonna, I'm gonna to go to next week, because Brian and I have already talked, and he wants to run a schedule next week, four days at 10 hours a day. So I'm gonna to go to the scheduled hours after I click on this bar. It brings up all these menus. You have all your forecasted weather data here, which is literally showing you how many inches per day you should run if you're gonna run every day. Brian doesn't wanna do that. We're gonna go 10 hours in here. We're gonna leave that for Monday. And we're gonna say he's gonna start at 7 a.m. And I hit the plus button and it added it to the schedule. The next time he's gonna run 10 again. We're gonna run that Wednesday, pick the same time. Hit the plus button. Next day, 10 hours, he's gonna run Friday. He's gonna run at 7 a.m. And then either Saturday or Sunday, I think he said Saturday, but we can, you can obviously make adjustments to this throughout the schedule. Um, we'll see what the weather looks like and the performance of the soil moisture widget itself. 
if it looks like we're still under a little bit and we need to add some more, we will. Uh, we can adjust this anyway. Again, this isn't controlling the pump. It's, it's just your schedule that you have the ability to email and share in any way you want. So we'll put that Saturday. And let's give him a little break on Saturday. He doesn't have to get up as early. <laughs> you, won't, you won't make him get up in the middle of the night this time, huh? No, we'll put him at a.m. Did I put, oh, I did put Pete. No, I, I put a.m. He's good. <laughs> and we don't yeah. want to give him the whole day off. He's, he's an early riser anyways. Like I said, he got up this morning and started a little early, but it doesn't matter. It, it, it's better. It's cooler. Yeah, get, get the water out there as soon as you can. And then remember to hit save. And then there's the schedule. So now he's forecasted for 42. Oops, I got a little air here. He's forecasted for 42 hours. We're scheduling for 40. Um, and, and again, we'll, we'll see throughout the week you, as you monitor your, your sites, you know, how is my performance? Because you, you might want to make minor adjustments to this as you go. So, so Dave, how does this uh, account for the uh, irrigation system application rate? Where, where, how does it know this information? The, well, the application rate um, is within, within the, the irrigation set itself that we've created. Um, there's a video out there for that as well. I think we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Within the tool set in the configuration page, is where all this data is input and this is why you said earlier it's very important to have this information because if your irrigation system if this data is not correct it's not going to know how long to tell you to run because your application rate so he's got drip compensated 0 0.027 inches per hour his uniformity is about 95 and the start date would be the age of the the irrigation system itself the other crucial point is the coefficiency curve. And he's got almonds, Sandine model. He's a 0.5, so his trees are, they're a little above halfway to a full production, um, but we'll make that adjustment at the end of this season. And then his emergent state, because of the Sandine model, is calendar year, so we always start 1-1 one, one of that year. So another reason you've gotta go in here and make sure that this date is correct. It's always gonna be the current year you're in. And with all this data and the crop type, which has your tree spacing and row spacing in it, and the, even the varieties, with all that information and the polygon that's been drawn around the property, calculating acreage of 28 acres, all floods into the algorithms with all that runtime data and tells you how, to, how long to run. And then it'll tell you how, how, by how long you ran, what your actual applied water was. I think that answered your question there. Yeah, no, definitely. That's an amazing amount of uh, information, that calculation. I, I thank you for going through that. All right. So, I mean, that's really it in a nutshell when it comes to that. Um, it, it seems easy. Getting there is not, there's a little homework involved, but again, it all goes back to, you know, I heard this from day one. My, my father was a computer guy. Um, I had a, a more powerful computer in my barracks room in Virginia Beach, Virginia than the Navy had in their entire inventory. And it was a 486 DX2. It wasn't even a very powerful computer. But he always used to tell me garbage in, garbage out. Computers don't know how to, you know, you, they, there are certain things that they just don't know. And if you input the data incorrectly, you could be skewed. If you don't update your coefficient curve, your numbers are going to be way off. Brian has been very uh, diligent about making his seasonal adjustments and uh, adjusting his root zones. That's why in the beginning of this call, we were talking with Connor Cunningham. He's going to get it on the schedule to go out there and meet with Brian and take some soil samples so we can ground truth the data we're seeing and then also to see where his roots are actually at. And that, again, is something that farmers are used to doing normally, and it just validates our data as well. So if I set up this schedule, right, um, do I have to have everybody log on to Jane Logic to see the schedule, or is there another way I can get it to other people? No, that's that's a good question too. The uh, let me get back to the scheduler. The scheduler has options built in where you can email it. I'll show you that right down here. So you've got so a copy from an actual would be if you're copying a, an irrigation event from what actually happened, and I wanted it to match this perfectly. 
it's a, it's a little bit of cheating. In the Navy, we call that gun decking. But that gives you the ability to, to duplicate what you did this week, and then you can copy from the week before. So copy from week. So you can duplicate what you did, copy it, repopulate next week's schedule, which is what we did here. And then we'll go into, and I've got an error here. I'm about to go and find out what I did wrong. Usually means I'm overlapping somewhere. Um, you can print it and you can share. When you share it, it's gonna give you a list of your users that are within Jane Logic. Uh, okay, so it looks like I can just email it to Brian very easily and. Right, right here, you can email it or I can print it. And, you know, and if it has the email option, that means he's a user and, and, and he's set up as a manager. Uh, so in some cases, and we've talked about this before too, when you're using this option, you might have 10 fields. Um, you might have four different irrigators or five different irrigators for those 10 fields. And you want, you don't want them getting all the stuff they don't need. So it gives you the ability here to, you know, select the email print or none for that user. And if they're not selected within that, uh, that irrigation set as the manager, um, it, it'll automatically default and come up with none or, or with a print like that. That's how come I was already in there as print. Brian was already set up to email because he's the manager. And then you hit share. And we're going to send Brian a schedule right now. And I hope okay. Brian's in on this call so he knows it's coming. <laughs> I All might right. be pushing the limits of my internet here because I, I am at home working. Yep, it's been sent. There it goes. Brian, email's on the way for your next week's schedule. Yeah. So, um, so David, you really helped here uh, in, in a lot of ways in uh, helping us uh, set up the irrigation schedule using the uh, infiltration uh, tool or the widget. Uh, thanks so much for that. But, um, you know, as I come away from these, you know, I leave the uh, webinars or I don't want to necessarily watch it all over again. Uh, can I call you for information on this or how for training? How's the best way for me to do that? Yeah, absolutely. You can call m myself or you can call Connor um, or you can email us, text message. And then for a lot of users that don't know it, this question mark in the bottom right corner of your screen has all the company information, the website, the, su the support. I'll get it at that email address as well. As well. The entire support team will. This phone number, uh, there's a link for the user guide. And the best thing about this is, is that there's this live chat option, which actually is gonna bring up a live chat. And I can populate my name. And I'm gonna put help. And I'm gonna hit start chat. And let's see if Richard answers. <laughs> Oh, call accepted by Richard, currently in the room. So this is awesome, actually. And I find it difficult to get customers to do it. But once they do it, I can't get them to stop. But it's great. Um, we have the software that allows us to have this, this real-time communication for simple things like, hey, I can't see this. And I'll literally log into your account, see what you're seeing, and say, okay, you, you've disabled a widget or something like that. And for stuff like that, it helps. And then if we can't get it through this, we'll call you or we can do a Zoom meeting or there's just a ton of options. And this is Richard Gates, right? He's the founder of the company that originally started the software, right? Yes, so, that is correct. So through the chat, I can be talking to that person. And uh, is, is there a charge for that? No, no. it comes with your service, yep. None of, none of the things we talked about today are, are chargeable. Uh, uh, offenses. <laughs> yeah, everything is part of your service fees. So, you know, get your money's worth. We're, we're here to answer all these questions. Uh, I, I live for this. I was on the phone this morning for an hour and 45 minutes with a user uh, that had not logged in yet. And I noticed he didn't accept my uh, the request and it was getting past its due date. So I called out to him and uh, we ended up doing a Zoom meeting. And uh, I think he's uh, a lot more happier with that than uh, anything else. Yeah. Well, great job today, David. I really appreciate your time. Everybody who joined, I want to remind you that uh, you can go on the Jane website and we'll look at our um, webinar series and see every class. You can still stream them for free uh, and remind you that on Wednesday next week at noon uh, Pacific, uh, we're going to have John Farner from the Irrigation Association on. 
and uh, John's going to be talking to us about what the Irrigation Association is doing for their members, very abnormal. So I know a lot of you will be uh, interested in that as well. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next week then. Great. Thank, Thank you, Richard. Everybody. Thanks, everybody.